Good day. I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Uh, it's good to gather to worship the Lord. I'm Reverend Pamela Scott, and I serve Strathmore United Church. Our opening psalm today is Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. joining in our call to worship, wherever you are watching this video, know it is no ordinary place. Wherever you are, God is present. Here, where I am, is a place where the prophets cry out for peace and justice and righteousness. It is the place where God reaches out into the corners of your life to offer you the mystery of holy love. This is no ordinary gathering. This is no ordinary place. Wherever you are is the house of God. And our opening hymn comes from Voices United 348, O Love, How Deep. together in our gathering prayer, let us pray. Come to us, holy God, as we gather before you. Encircle us with your love. Bless us with your sustaining presence. Surround us with your grace. Draw us round your living word and bind us to one another as disciples of Christ, whose spirit is in our midst. Amen. And the scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 4, 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, 
Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly an angel came and waited on him. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The outward disciplines, simplicity and solitude. Solitude? When I was reading up on this, I must admit my first thought was solitude with physical distancing and self-isolation and the shutdown of all but the essential services, many of us have had quite enough solitude. Certainly some are feeling very isolated and somewhat lonely. Loneliness is not good. Loneliness is uncomfortable. For some it leads to a feeling of distress as they realize there is a gap between their desire for social connection and their actual experience of socially connecting. The state might come about because you are alone, but some, even when surrounded by people, still experience loneliness. The disconnect between your expectation of socially connecting and what is actually happening. But solitude is different. Often it does involve being alone. Jesus went off alone for 40 days following his baptism. Not until he completed 40 days alone did he start in ministry. He went off to a mountain and spent a night alone before choosing his 12 disciples. When Jesus learned of the death of John the Baptist, he went off in a boat to a deserted place by himself. After feeding 5,000, Jesus sends the disciples away and he goes up the mountain by himself to pray. Over and over again we read how Jesus took time away alone. Why? Why did he go off on his own? To pray. He needed to be away from the crowds to focus on conversing with the Father. Solitude, being away from others. If you are able, it is nice to be away, to go on a retreat when you are away from the demands made on your time and focus on conversing with the Father. But being away is not so much about being away from people as it is about facilitating the silence needed to hear the divine whisper. Solitude allows for silence, the silence that is necessary to hear what God is saying to you. Prayer is a conversation. You speak and God listens. God speaks and you listen. We serve a living God who wants to be in relationship and the conversation of prayer develops. We need the silence of solitude to hear the still, small voice, the gentle and quiet whisper of God speaking to us. Do you have to be away on a retreat in order to hear the voice of God? No. The quiet few minutes between the alarm clock and the feet hitting the floor may be your few minutes of solitude and silence. Perhaps your moments of solitude is the drive into the city, 45 minutes of potentially quiet time where you might hear God's whisper. Solitude and silence interconnected, facilitating relationship, allowing us to hear the voice of God. Take time to listen. Amen and amen. Our next hymn comes from Voices United 343, I Love to Tell the Story. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And our minute for mission today is called A Safe Home. Down a long road behind a large fence in Nairobi, Kenya, is a safe house for LGBTQIA and two spirited refugees from Uganda, Somalia, and South Sudan, supported by mission and service partner Peminzo Christian Council. The refugees who live here dream of a day when they are resettled in Canada or other country where they can live freely without fear of imprisonment. While the group waits to be resettled, they have named themselves Nature Network and spend their time creating art. Whether it is movies, dance, or vlogs to post on Facebook, the group always puts their best foot forward. In 2017, a small group of mission and service pilgrims visited the safe house and received a warm welcome. When some of the visitors shared that they were LGBTQIA and Two Spirit, they were openly and, and were openly in relationships, the residents cheered, since that's what they'd been praying would be possible for them one day. We are thankful that in the United Church of Canada, there are opportunities to sponsor and support LGBTQIA and Two-Spirited Refugees. With joy, let us present our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Christ's Church. Financially, you may support the Church by mailing in your offering donation, signing up for PAR, by using e-transfer from your financial institution, or by going to the donation link on the Church webpage. Share the gifts you've been blessed with. And let us pray. God of all people and to God of all places, we present these offerings that they may be used to extend your liberating reign. With them, we offered our various ministries that each of us may be part of your answer to the cries of the world. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. and we'll preface our prayers of the people with Lord, listen to your children praying.
and let us pray. In our prayers, let us give thanks for the gifts of God and to pray for those who work in God's vineyard, saying, We give you thanks, blessed spirit, for the bounty of the earth, for the goodness within the human heart, for the power to change and the will to learn. Let us give thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit, for all whose work for healing, for people in the caring ministries, for ecologists and researchers, for pastoral care workers and friends, for the hands of Christ in the world, let us give thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit. For all who learn and teach, for apprentices and supervisors, for students and resource people, for program directors and camp leaders, for schools and educators, for wisdom and knowledge and guidance. Let us give you thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit. For those who struggle for liberation and justice, for the witness of base communities, for mission and development workers, for those who risk their lives for others, for those who work for human rights, for those who speak truth on behalf of the oppressed, for all who bear witness to the way of Christ, let us give thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit. Let us lift. We ask that you gather our prayers, those spoken and those held deep within our hearts, and bless us as together we pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn today is Voices United 352, I Danced in the Morning. of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. of Christ be with you. Please connect with someone today and share the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>